So, writing the equation, the equations of circles. And we'll, in parentheses, we'll put completing the square. Okay. So, All right, so we're starting to start out kind of basically here. So let's do a very basic kind of completing the square. So given the uh, following partial equations we want to complete the um, complete the square I guess by filling in the blank okay so let's see here so let's start off with one alright so this is the first one here we'll look at so let's say we have like x squared plus 6x plus blank. Okay. And we want to fill in that third number there, okay, that would then result in this thing being a perfect square. So we can't just pick any old number, right? There's only really, in fact, there's only one real particular number that would then complete this square, right? So any ideas here? What would it be? What's the number that's got to go there? Yeah, it's got to be 9. That's exactly right. It's going to be 9. Now, Tanner, how'd you know that? Because um, I divided the 6 by and then it had to be 3x plus 3x. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yes. Okay, the middle term here, okay, is going to have to be 3x plus 3x. Okay, and so then that would result in needing a 3 there. Okay, and then 3 times 3 gives you 9. Yeah, that's, that's actually the, the basic steps there. Exactly right. And so then this is a perfect square of what? It's the square of what thing? In this case, Tanner, what would that be? The square of, yeah, x plus 3. Right? Okay. When we add that, when we fill in the blank here, x squared plus 6x plus 9, we get the perfect square. It's the perfect square of x plus 3, basically. So x plus 3 quantity squared. Okay. Again, you can kind of see it if we work this. We can see that okay to make 6x that means you know this term has to like basically be double or not double but it's got to be like you got to have itself multiplied by itself so 3x and the 3x then make 6x there okay and so then that would result in the 9 being requiring to go in there okay all right let's try another one here how about i don't know why i'm doing that i'm going to circle these okay all right so how about uh x squared plus 10x plus blank. And again, we'll figure out what that's going to equal here in a second. Okay. So what's the blank going to be here? What would then make this thing a perfect square? What can we add here? Uh, ideas? Yeah. Evan? Yep, it's 25. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. 25. Yep. Again, if we if we just like kind of we did saw here, if we split that six and two, it's got it's going to be three, right? Okay. We know that whatever whatever number we have, whatever number we're going to pick, you know, for our value over here, it's going to be split in half. Okay. It's going to be three x plus another three x, so it gets six x there. So we square that then, and we get nine. So same thing here. If we take half of this number here, five, and square it, we get 25. And so x plus 5, exactly right, Keegan, is the perfect square. Okay, which is really then, yeah, x plus 5 times x plus 5. Okay, so again, the idea here, we're taking the middle term, half of it, and then squaring it to get that number. 
half middle term here, squaring it to get that number. If we look at the warm up, okay, that pattern, that pattern, that kind of like thing kind of continues here, okay. Uh, number one, this is a perfect square. We know that it's x plus two quantity squared. Half this middle term, two squared is four. So there's what that there's what that uh, would have to be, right? Um, half the middle term here, half of negative ten, negative five squared, positive twenty five. Okay. Half the middle term, negative one squared, positive one. All right. This is not a perfect square, so it does not necessarily follow that pattern, right? Half of one is one half squared would be one fourth, but that's not a perfect square, so it doesn't have to follow the pattern. These other ones does. Okay. So what we're doing here is kind of what we would call completing the square. Let's try another one. All right, how about x squared minus 8x? What's going to go here? Hunter? Yeah, plus 16, positive 16. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be equal to, what's that a perfect square of, though? What quantity? Yeah, x minus 4. Yeah, x minus 4. Okay? You need the minus 4 there because we have a negative 8x middle term, but then a positive 16 there. Okay? These two here is a plus 3 and a plus 5 because it was positive middle term and a positive secondary term. Positive middle term and positive secondary term. Okay? And that's, it, will result, it will result in that. Okay? All right. Let's try one more here. This one's going to be a little bit tricky, but we'll see. All right. How about uh, x squared plus 5x? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so if we think about this here, we have x squared, there's always going to be a number in front of our x, so we'll put that number like a b there or something like that, and then we always seem to be adding half that middle coefficient, so half of b, so b divided by 2, and then squared. So what is b divided, what's, what's our middle term divided by 2 in this case? 2.5. Or you can leave it as 5 halves if you want to. So, you know, you can, you can even say if you want to, you could say 5 halves, okay? And then squaring 5, because it's easier to square a fraction, I think, than a decimal. Um, what, you know, is 5 halves squared? Well, 5 squared is 25. Oops. 5 squared is 25, and then the halves squared is 4. So it's just plus 25 fourths. And so you get x plus 5 halves quantity squared. Okay? And that's perfect square there. But again, it follows the same pattern, as follows this pattern here, what we saw earlier, where the middle term, if you do half of it and square it, that gives you, that allows you to complete that square. It finds that middle, that, that's, um, per com complete the square, make it a perfect square. Make it a perfect square. Okay? So questions on any of that? It's a little bit funky, but that's the basic idea here, what we're going to use. That's the skill we're going to use to now, we can now use this um, process to write the equation of circles. To write equations of circles. in standard form. <coughs> Bless you. Okay. So standard form, remember, that was the x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals the radius squared. Okay. So that's what our goal is. And so far, all the problems that we've seen, well, all the ones we saw yesterday, all the ones we had for homework, were written in that form, or we had to put them in that form. But sometimes, they're not in that form. So let me give you an example. x squared plus 8x plus y squared minus 2y equals 8. Okay. Okay.
This this is not in our standard form for the circ for the equation of a circle. Okay, it's not written with the quantity x minus some number squared plus y minus some number squared equals radius squared. We have x squared plus okay, so but but it's it's plus eight x, and we have a y squared minus two y. These, these this eight x and this two y they're causing us problems here. If we if we didn't have those, if we just had x squared plus y squared equals eight, well then that would be in standard form. But now with this this eight x term this two y term that's um, kind of messing us up here. So we have to kind of fix this. We have to make this into, we're going to make this work into um, our standard equation here, standard form for that circle. Okay, we're going to do this by completing the square. And in fact, we have to complete the square twice, once for x and then once also for y as well, because neither of them are perfect squares right now, because they both have this x squared plus 8x and this y squared minus 2y. So what we're going to do is take our equation all right, and we're going to kind of break it up. We're going to collect all of our x, square, x terms to, together. They're already kind of together. I'm going to leave some space here, and I'm going to add to that. I'm going to leave some space because we're going to fill in that blank there, just like we were before. And I'm going to, again, leave some space there for a blank. Equals 8. Okay, and so now we want to complete, complete the square here twice. Once for the x, once for the y. Okay. So, what number? Okay, what number should we add in here for um, to complete the square for the x terms? What, uh, what do you say, Drew? What number should we add in there to complete the square for the x terms? Um, yeah. So we're going to add sixteen. Exactly right. And how'd you get that? Um, yeah. So how do they? 4 squared is 16, so we're going to add 16. Now, we're in an equation setting here. So can we just add a number to one side of an equation whenever we feel like it? Yeah, we can't, right? So if I add a number 16 right here to this left-hand side of the equation, where else do I have, do I, where else do I have to add a 16? Yeah, on the other side here, plus 16 over here. Okay, if I add it to one side, I've got to add it to the other side, too. It's got to balance the equation out. Why didn't we do that up here in 1, 2, 3, and 4? Like, why didn't we add to both sides of the equation here? Well, because we didn't really have an equation here. I was asked to just complete the square. So it's not like we, it was equal to something. We're just like, okay, just, just fill in this blank. But here, this is, this is actually equal to a number. It's equal to 8. And so if we add 16 over here, we have to balance the equation out and add 16 over here. Here, it was more just an expression. We were just filling in the blank. But here, it's, actually, it's already an equation, so we have to make sure we balance it out. Okay, so good, that's right. All right, and how about the next one then? What about, what about the, the y terms there? Let's go to Adam. What do you say here? What are we going to put in here to complete that square for the y's? Yeah, plus 1, that's right. Okay, just like that. And of course, what we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side, so we're going to add 1 over on this side as well to keep that equation balanced, right? If you add 1 to one side, you've got to add 1 to the other side. If you add 16 to one side, you have to add 16 to the other side. Okay, so the right-hand side, that's easy to simplify. We can do that math. 8 plus 16, 24, plus 1 is 25. Okay, and then we have to factor this x squared plus 8x plus 16. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, uh. So Julie, what will that x squared plus 8x plus 16, what will that factor to be? What's that a perfect square of? X plus 4. Yeah, x plus 4. Mm -hmm. And then what about the y squared minus 2y plus 1, Julie? What will that become? Um, y minus Good. Yes, y minus 1 quantity squared. And look at that. Boom, it's the equation of a circle. Okay, it's now written. All right. Uh, let's see here. So, John, what's the center of that circle? Uh, yeah. Oh, except be careful. It's backwards. <laughs> Negative 4, positive 1, that's right. And then what's the radius of the circle? That's r squared. Yeah, it's 5. I know it's weird going backwards, but there it is. Okay, yep, the center of the circle is negative 4, 1, radius is 5. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's the idea there. <coughs> All right, questions on any of that? Is anyone completely lost? Maria, you're feeling it? Yes? 
<laughs> I'm sorry, but I mean, I just want to make sure you got it because you look you looked unsure. Okay. You did see this in Mr. Drum's class before, though, yes? Yeah. Okay, but it's just I know it's it's a tricky it's tricky in the first place. It's not it's just because you've seen it before it doesn't make it easy. No, I get that. That's I understand. I had difficulty with this when I was learning it too. So it's weird, but it's the only way we can do these kind of problems, and it's something that I'm supposed to show you. So here it is. All right, let's try another one and see if I can confuse Maria further. Okay, or someone else in here that I didn't pick on yet. So. Okay, here's another one. <coughs> okay, so this one, before I even try to complete the square, I need to do some rearranging because things are out of order. Okay, in the previous example, we already kind of had our x's together, we already kind of had our y's together, and notice that our constant, the number that doesn't have a variable with it, was on the other side of the equation. That's actually, that's where we want it to be. Okay, that's where we want it to be. Here, it's equal to zero, and we have the constant, we have a constant four over here on the other side, so we'll have to do some manipulation. So what we want to do is we want to reorganize the equation so we get our x terms together. So I'll make, instead of x squared plus y squared plus 14x, I'm going to do x squared plus 14x, okay? Leave a blank, and then plus y squared minus 12y, leave a blank, okay? And then equals, and I may move that 4 over, make that a negative 4, okay? So I, so I did a lot of things there in one step, so I hope I didn't, like, you know, if anyone's lost, just, I mean, please say so if you're, if you're confused about where it went. I'll go through it again here. We subtracted the 4 over, rearranged the y squared and negative 12y so they go together, and the x squared and the plus 14x so they go together, and now I've got to fill in these blanks to complete those squares. Okay. <coughs> All right. So let's see here. So, oh, question, yes. Oh, you got an answer? Okay, hang on. Let me go. Let me let me hold off on that real quick. Maria, what do you want to say? I have the answer. Oh, you think you got it? All right. Well, Maria, I'm going to have you go. All right. Well, well, then we'll just go with that then. So, Maria, why don't you go ahead? Give me what should this number be right here? Yeah, plus 49. All right. And then uh, Evan, what should this one be? Plus 36. Plus uh, 36. Yeah, very good. Okay. And then, of course, what we do to this side? So we added a 49 on this side. We added a 36 over here. We're going to do the same thing. Plus a 49. Plus a 36. Got to balance that equation out. Okay, so Zishan, what would this then fact? What would this become? Uh, what's th what's this a perfect square of? Uh, seven. Mhm. Mm X. Uh, X, is X plus seven X to the second. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. And what about the y's here? What would that factor to become? Um, X minus six. Y. Yeah, but oh, yeah, y. You're, yeah, that's okay. Y minus six. That's good. Uh huh. Very good. And then let's see if we combine these together. Uh, forty-five. Uh, eighty-one. So there it is. All right. Very good. And so then, Lindsay, what's the center of this circle? Yeah, good. Negative 7, 6. And then what's the radius, Lindsay? 9. You got it. Good job. Okay. <coughs> All right. We'll do one more together here, and then I'll have you guys do one on your own, too. Okay, so two more, and then that's it. That's all we're going to be doing today. Just those, just that for the examples, okay? And then I'll have an assignment for you, too. All right. Here we go. So just two more. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go with uh, y squared plus 2x plus x squared equals 24y minus 120. <coughs> so let's see here. All right, Mary, what should our first step be here? Okay, so rearrange the things. Okay, rearrange the things. So how should I write it now? Um, x squared plus two x. Uh huh. Leave a blank, Leave right? A blank. Okay. Good, and then a, leave a blank, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then. And then you set that equal to negative 120. 
Yeah, very good. Exactly right. Okay. Good job. So we got we collected our x's together, collected our y's together, and then brought that negative 120 over to kind of get things in a nice format for us to now complete the square. All righty, let's go to Oh, this is not here. Uh, Melissa, okay, Melissa, help us complete the square here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, that's right, yep, good. And then what about the Y? Oh, right, plus one over there, sorry, yes, uh-huh. Yeah, good, plus 144 there, and so the same thing over here as well. And so, let's see, that's going to factor two, let's go to... Uh, all right, how about Patrick? So that x squared plus 2x plus 1, Patrick, what will that factor to be? What perfect square is that? x plus 1 squared plus mm -hmm. y plus 12 squared. Not y plus. Or minus. There you go. Yeah, watch that sign. Very easy to miss that, right? But it is minus 12 squared. And then that's going to equal? 25. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Which means then that the center, Patrick, of the circle, the center is what? Close. Watch your signs. Remember, it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. So the center. So then negative one. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. And the radius would be what? Twenty-five. Ooh, that's r squared. Five. Five. There you go. I know. It's so it's so it's such a pain in the butt. You're like you get through all that work and you get through this and you're just like ah, oh, you forget that stuff. So. There it is. And there's the equation for the circle. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's the last one. You guys try this, and I'll give you guys your assignment here. All right. So 8x plus 32y plus y squared equals negative 263 minus x squared. Okay. And that's about as nasty as it will be, I think. Mm, I could put coefficients on the x and the y squares, but in the y squares, but we won't do that. Okay. We haven't really talked about whether there's a well, if there were coefficients in front of the x squared or y squared term, but we're not going to worry about that. Save that for a future class. What's And if you don't mind, please also find that center and the radius, too, please. Identify the center and radius, please. Yes. 
interesting. I don't know where it's actually in my yeah. person, but oh, and in fact, since you did that, you got oh. your. Yeah, gotta be careful there. Okay, so you correctly can take the squares, right? And you add the correct, correct numbers there. Yes, the radius is 3. The center, though, is not this number, it's half x plus 4. So 8 times 8 will give you 16. It's the middle term. Right, just think about it. If you're going to do x plus 8 times x plus 8, if you're going to like square this out, it'll be 8 times 8 for the third term, which is 24. You need to do 16. So it, yeah, it's half of that. So you see, half that x plus one. Oh yeah, but if you look at this one, it does not work out that way. See, it's half the middle term, half the middle term. Because then when you square that seventy and forty nine, you square that sixty and positive. Okay, we'll go. So let's look what we have here. When we're going to spread it out, we're going to do 16 times y, and then we want to do another number 16 y, and that's going to add to be a positive 32 y. So what does that do? If we have a positive 32 y, what does that have to be? So let me finish here. Okay, so let's just imagine here. And again, you're going from this way to this way, but we should be able to go back and see it right here. So let's just imagine, let's say it's y plus x. Okay, if I were to square it out, like I have it right here, y times y, so y squared, okay, we have y squared. Excuse me, I'm sorry, y times 16, so plus 16 16 times y, plus 16 times y, 16 times 16 times 16 to 15. Okay, so should it be plus 16? Yes, it should be. If we always be in minus 16, it would be minus 16 y minus 16 y would be minus 32 Noise? Okay. Boom, so there it is, okay? Should be x plus 4 quantity squared, y plus 16 quantity squared equals 9. Center is negative 4, negative 16, or just 3. Okay. Questions on any of that? So. Um, why is it y plus 16? 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 So, let's, let's just, we'll say it was y minus 16. So, you, you're thinking it should be y minus 16, maybe? Or how do we tell which one it is? I would y minus 16. So, just think about, remember, this step, so we're going like this direction, right? We're going from here to here to here. But we should be able to go backwards and still like end up with the same thing, right? That's the whole point kind of thing. So like this, if I square it out, had better give me y squared plus 32y plus 256. If we use minus 16s, that'll end up with a negative 32y middle term there, okay? So if you're ever unsure about which sign to do, just like pick one. Just say, okay, let's make it y minus 16. If I do... If I do y minus 16 squared, it's y minus 16 times y minus 16. And that gives me y squared uh, minus 16y, and then, oops, sorry, I should have done it this way. And then another minus 16y, and then a plus 256. And you can see you're going to get the wrong middle term if you use the minus 16. So then it's got to be the plus. That's all. Just check yourself there. All right. That's that.